Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. Uh, and today it is going to be somewhat of a more conversational screencast. I can't even touch the keyboard from where I'm sitting now. Um, what I basically want to do is uh, celebrate 10 years of using Vim by drinking a couple of liters of Coke and just talking about how you learn Vim. Um, so I, I do get questions occasionally along the lines of, you know, how, what is the path to mastery, so to speak? And obviously there are lots of paths and I don't think mastery is a destination anyway. There's, uh, it's more complicated than that, right? Um, even after you've been using Vim for years, there's a bunch of things that remain to be learned and we all have bad habits, I think, that we, we need to overcome. And that's certainly the case for me. But in any case, I thought I would share a little bit about the path that I took. Um, it's not the only path that works, but it might be helpful for somebody who's just starting out. Um, because specifically the question that made me th start thinking about this was somebody who put a comment on a video and he, he or she said something like, you know, I'm trying really hard to learn all these things about Vim, but you know, then I look at some, somebody like you with these huge dot files and I don't even know how I could find anything in them. Like, how do you remember all the stuff that's in there and do you find yourself not using it and, and so on and so forth. So I thought I would talk about the approach that I've taken to get to where I am today. Um, so as I said, I started using Vim about 10 years ago uh, and the way I chose to learn it was to go t cold turkey, which basically means I switched to Vim for all of my editing uh, in a very kind of black and white disciplined way with no exceptions. And my theory was that if I could really immerse myself in it, I would learn quicker. Um, and I think that's true of any like dramatically different way of working or any modality. So for example, in the case of Vim, we're talking about a modal editor. That's a big kind of change of uh, mentality. So uh, another example would be learning a new keyboard layout, things like that. I prefer to just go for broke and just completely immerse myself in it. And obviously that's not the, the kind of thing you would want to do for every possible technique or technology that you want to learn. Um, I only do it for things that I have good reason to believe will be worth the investment. So I, you know, I knew at the time that Vim was probably going to be pretty rewarding and it was probably worth engaging one of these spikes where I like invested really intensely for a while just to figure out whether or not it was something that I wanted to keep going into. And so in the case of Vim, even within, within minutes, I felt like it was going to be worth uh, pursuing. Um, and that is because, funnily enough, uh, right before I started learning Vim, I'd done a similar spike with Emacs and it really felt uncomfortable for me uh, at every step of the way. And switching to Vim, even though it was switching to a modal editor, was just like a breath of fresh air. And so within minutes, hours, days, it just became more and more obvious that this was a totally, a totally good investment. I'm not, not to say that Vim was the best editor or that I would never want to switch away from it, but that if I learned Vim, it was clear to me that there would be a reward. There would be a return on my investment. And so I kept going. So I started with a completely blank Vim RC and built it up line by line, basically, um, scratching itches in a kind of priority order. So the things that were most annoying to me or the pain points that I suffered most from, those were the things I addressed first. And obviously you can't go from a sophisticated IDE like Xcode, which is where I was coming from, or in modern terms, you know, you might be using VS code or something like that. You can't jump from that to a, a Vim install with a handwritten Vim RC that does all the things the IDE could do. Um, you can't do that overnight. Um, it is possible to grab somebody else's config. Like you could clone my dot files or somebody else's dot files, or you could use a, a library or a package like space max or something like that, that purports to give you batteries included, everything out of the box, ready to go. Um, and even back 10 years ago, there were things like that for Vim. They weren't obviously as evolved as they are today. But I didn't want to install, you know, 10,000 lines of config and stuff that other people had written without really understanding it. So that's how I went, line by line, scratching each by each until I produced the result that I have today. And so I still scratch itches. If you look at my dot files, you'll see, you know, every now and again, I discover some new way to do something or something that can be made to look prettier or work more smoothly or whatever. Um, and I never stop. And I hope that I continue to find things that make Vim better. I mean, the other thing, in addition to my own growth, as I learn things, 
Vim itself changes. So like, I can't even remember what version Vim was at when I started, but it might have, it might have been seven or late six. I actually can't remember at this point. And obviously since then, a lot has happened to Vim itself. You know, NeoVim has come out and a lot of the features that NeoVim pioneered ended up going into Vim as well. Uh, and you know, the state of the art Vim config from, you know, 2011, like couldn't do the things you can do today in 2019. And I imagine that that'll be true, you know, in 2029, like Vim will have evolved and uh, there'll always be something to learn. I mean, so my suggestion, if that's the kind of learning style that suits you is to just be patient, uh, focus on learning Vim and bit by bit improve uh, one thing at a time. Uh, and so an example might be like, if you wanna figure out, well, how do I get italics to work in the terminal? Well, figure it out, do some research. I might even have a screencast on it um, and make it happen. Or you might not like the way your status line looks, or you might not like the way uh, windows show that they're focused or not, or you might not uh, feel like you have an adequate command over how Vim does regular expressions. Like there's an almost endless list of things that you might wanna improve and it's just a matter of taking them one at a time. Uh, so that's really it in general terms. Um, I would encourage you to, to yeah, to invest in, in Vim because it's, it's, it's definitely an investment that pays its dividends, so to speak. Um, that's really all I got, but thanks for listening. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you've got any comments about this or you want to share your own journey, Go ahead and do that um, in the comments. Uh, but other than that, thanks for listening and I'll see you again later.